Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God, Galatians chapter number 6. And we're going to look at verses 7 and 8. So Galatians 6, 7, and 8. <laughs> that should be pretty easy to remember. The Bible says in verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, this verse, these verses can, uh, can be a little confusing sometimes, because I know that part, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, that that part can kind of indicate a, um, you know, whatever you do, it'll be returned unto you type of thing. But these verses in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, <coughs> excuse me, it's talking about a very particular thing, and that is your soul, okay? Because it says here, first of all, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Now, who mocks God? Do his children mock God? No, not at all. Those who reject him, the unbelievers, those are the ones that mock God. So uh, God here is immediately bringing up uh, the unbeliever, those who mock God, those who uh, have rejected him. And it says here, be not deceived. God is not mocked because those who do mock God think they're getting away with it. And those who have rejected God, they think there's going to be no consequence at all, that nothing's going to happen to them and, and uh, you know, th that uh, things will go on as, as normal for them. It says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever <clears throat> a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Of course, we just read that. And then look at verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, capital S, okay, that's the Holy Spirit. That's a person now. And so it's not, not your spirit, not my spirit, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, capital S. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the, again, capital S, Spirit, reap life everlasting. <clears throat> the whole concept of sowing and reaping is you take a seed and you bury it, right? You basically kill it. You, you bury it in the dirt. That's what happens when we die. We get buried in the dirt, right? And so when we die, that is the sowing part, okay? And a seed that is alive, a seed that is ready to bring forth fruit, when you bury it, when you kill it, it doesn't die in the dirt, but it grows into a tree or whatever the plant is that that seed is supposed to create or grow into. It's saying here that they that sow, uh, soweth to his flesh. So basically, if you are relying on your self, on your flesh, for eternity, and you die in that flesh, you, you sow in the flesh, basically you're being buried, and, and all you have to rely on is your own flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Basically, you're going to be corrupted forever, dying in your sins and suffering eternal death. But those who sow to the Spirit, capital S, that is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, okay? Also known as the Comforter, capital C, okay? He's a person. It's God. It's Jesus Christ. You sow to the Spirit. I mean, you die with the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You are saved. You are born again. You sow to the Spirit, buried to the Spirit, then uh, <clears throat> shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. 
If you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. When you die, you're not really dying. You're being planted. You're going to rise again, just like Jesus Christ did. And you will be able to reap life everlasting because you have sown to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus Christ. What an incredible promise that we have. Uh, I'm going to stop right there. Please pray for us. Today is packing day. It's going to be a crazy day today. Packing everything in one day, uh, both our house and the church, everything. We have to get it ready. The movers are coming first thing tomorrow morning. So everything has to be boxed up today. Uh, we just got back uh, late last night <clears throat> from our trip to Texas. Um, so Whew, what a whirlwind uh, of a month, but I do appreciate your prayers, and we did make it back safely to California. Thank you so much. It was a very productive uh, meeting in Texas, business meeting, and um, so uh, now we're back, and we're ready to serve God. We're ready to, uh, to do what we need to do here, uh, so I appreciate your prayers, and God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.